What's up, guys? Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Hector um, or Misael. Depends on, you know, those of you who know me from my first or my middle name. Um, yeah, I go to the Church of Verdad y Vida, and I have this privilege and this uh, I've been given this, you know, this opportunity to share about about what's happening in my life. So I just want to thank the Church of Sion for allowing me to do this, um, for giving me this platform. Thank you, Caleb. And uh, yeah, so why am I talking to you guys today, right? That's a question. Um, and I'm here to tell you my testimony, small, um, small little bit about my testimony, and which is uh, my fight with depression and suicide. Um, I have attempted suicide about five times um, within the last two to three years. Um, I'm not proud to say it. I'm honestly really embarrassed and this is tough. This is a tough thing to do, but um, I feel like, you know, this is a message and a purpose that God has given me to share with you because um, just like the other two um, videos that you know that you guys have seen, it's it's conversations like this that aren't really talked about that need to be talked about. Things that happen within our church that you know we need to bring to light. So that's what I'm trying to do here today. Um, before I continue, either, um, furthermore. I just want to say um, this, the whole purpose of this is to give you guys my story and I'm not trying to offend anyone or call anyone out through this. It, that's not the reason I'm doing this. The reason is because I know there's people struggling just like I am. It started off, well, for, again, for those of you who don't know me, I actually had the privilege to be born into church, meaning um, since the very beginning, you know, I was presented when I was born to church. Actually, Sion, that's my, that's where I grew up. Um, but yeah, I, I had the privilege of being born into church, you know, my entire life has been in church. So yeah, I, uh, it's been what, 24 years already. So, you know, it's, it's been a blessing. So then you, you must be asking yourself, well, what, what can a guy who's been, you know, born into church have to say? And I have a lot to say, actually, um, a lot because just like you guys know, just being brought up in a family that believes in God doesn't mean anything unless you yourself do, you know, what you, what you have to do, which is listen to the word of God, believe in him. But there's times and tribulations that come that affect us. And um, so, yeah, let me tell you that this all began when I was younger. See, I'm the type of person that I have fought with trying to fit in. Right? I've always looked for the acceptance of others. And the reason for that is that at a very young age, I was actually um, bullied a lot at school. Um, the, the And it's, it's, it's funny, right? Because when you think of a bully, it's you always think of this big person, you know, older than you, which in my situation was actually like that. But it also was, and you know, the, your, your close friends sometimes, um, you know, when they pick on you and things like that, all of that effect affected me. Um, in school, there's, there's this kid just for, and this is the, like the most like earliest memory I have of this. Um, I, I was bullied. I was actually um, physically hurt by him because I, I was friends with a girl and he thought that was weird. So he picked me up and he threw me on the ground. And you know, stuff like that, it, it just, it, it's, it's been really tough, you know, trying to fit in when the world is changing around you and no matter what you do, you can never please them. So anyways, going back to the bullying at school, I had, I had a tough time fitting in with people, tough time and um, that actually created the fact, you know, the, it made stronger the, the urge to want to be fit in, the urge to want to be accepted by, by someone. And I looked for that, you know, I've always looked for that. 
and it didn't matter who accepted me, I just wanted someone to accept me. And it's tough because, you know, at a, such a young age, you, it, you're so vulnerable. You know, I've, I went through the phases that society threw at us. Um, my friends know um, the, the, the many weird phases I, I went through. And it's all of that, just, just because I was just trying to be, you know, normal. I just wanted to be part of something. Um, but it never really worked out. You know, and I, and I was always angry about that. I always, I always asked myself, why, why, why do people got to pick on me? You know, why is it always me? You know, like I said, um, I didn't have such a horrible childhood. You know, I, my parents gave me everything that they could. So it's not like I grew up, you know, in tough times. It's more of the emotional and psychological things that I went through. Um, but yeah, because of my wanting to fit in, I did some dumb things, really dumb things that affected my life to this day, right? What I mean by that is, um, I had a goal, you know, I, I just thought, I just told you guys that I didn't want to be a minister, but as I grew older, I remember there's a junior camp service in which, you know, the preacher asked you know, those of you who want to come and uh, and give, to go, come to the altar and pretty much ask God for, like, to be a preacher, you know, or, or be a pastor, be a minister, come up, right? And I decided to go up at that time. And I remember I, I had that desire in me to be a, be a preacher, to be a minister, to be a pastor, just like my dad, right? And um, because of... Because of the choices I did um, after senior year, right? Um, because I thought that I had to be a man and, you know, being a man means doing things that, you know, what men are supposed to do. I fell short and I messed up. Um, at that time, I actually had a, an opportunity at my local church to start services. And I, even though I, I wasn't good at it, it was, so, it was a blessing and a privilege. And I lost all of that. I remember the conversation when it happened that Sunday when I found out I wasn't able to do that because I had to confess, you know, what, what I had done. And I remember that Sunday feeling so broken um, because I had lost the ministry that I had. At the time, I was, you know, something you can't really describe, but I, I just felt, for the lack of words, sad. I had lost, at that time, I thought I had lost it all. The, the, the privilege to start services and the chance to ever become a minister or a pastor. And when when things got out, when, when I had confessed my sin, um, I felt so alone at that time. I felt, first of all, extremely upset at myself, extremely embarrassed because I had to tell my parents what I had done. And that conversation was, <laughs> to this day, one of the hardest conversations I've had to do because I remember the tears in my parents' eyes, the pain. I understand how devastating it is to disappoint your parents. I remember how much it hurt to uh, just hear. I, I couldn't even see them to their faces, but I could hear them. And that was all I needed to, uh, to, that's all I needed for me to understand the amount of disappointment, you know? And I carried that for a while, disappointment. I felt as if everybody judged me, as if everybody saw me and was just 
you know, judging me. Um, it's like, it's tough. It's a tough thing to feel so alone and embarrassed. Um, but you know, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't show that. I couldn't, I could never show that. But what happened was I became so dull and so cold when it came to the things of the Lord. I would go to church and you know, like I said earlier, I was born in church, so I knew how to play the part. I knew how to act okay. And I did it for a long time, for a very long time. But in reality, I was so cold and dull. I didn't care about any of that stuff, but I hated myself. I hated myself and the hatred inside of me started to grow and grow and grow. And I started, you know, when you get it, when I got, when I got embarrassed, when I felt like I embarrassed myself, I picked up this thing, which was just be angry because being angry is the opposite of being weak, of being embarrassed as so I thought. So I picked that up and I, and for everything, I would just be so mad. But the thing is, I just didn't want to seem vulnerable to anyone. I didn't want anyone to see me as this weak link, right? I wanted to be strong. So I thought anger um, was the answer. But it just built hate, unnecessary hate. And it got to the point in which anything would make me blow up. It got to the point in which my hatred for myself started to grow. And the thing is, at that time, man, I just wanted help. I just wanted someone to tell me that it was okay. I just wanted someone to tell me that, you know, I made a mistake, but it's not the end for me. I wanted someone to tell me that I didn't lose my ministry, that there's more. I just wanted something, you know? I just wanted a hug. I wanted the embrace and love of someone. I felt, you know, my leaders get really cold with me. And if they were embarrassed of me, man, that, that hurts to embarrass those people who you look up to, you know? Have them treat you differently. It's a tough thing because no matter where I went, I felt like I carried that with me and it happened. It, I, I, um, I, no matter where I went, I felt like what happened to me got carried along, meaning more and more people found out about what I did and it sucked. But again, I, as much as it hurt me, I just, I just got angry instead. Right. So, um, I thought I had lost it all. I thought I had no purpose. So I fell into a depression. And it's not so much because of the pain I felt from others, right? You might be asking yourself, well, didn't you have friends? I did. Well, I mean, what? there's only so much a friend could do, right? And the people I looked up to, you know, the people I, I, I had as role models left, whether they moved or they stopped going to church, they left. So I felt even more alone. So I really had no, I, I, I really didn't find anyone to talk to. And all I wanted was a friend. All I needed was a friend. I had a opportunity to move to another church. Um, and I started fresh there. I, so I thought, you know, still carrying all of this burden inside of me. Um, still struggling with depression. And what I mean by depression, it, it, I know most of you guys probably think it just means being sad, but it's not. Being depressed is something special. It's far more different. It's uh, no matter what, you can't find joy. And the worst part was that I just, 
I wasn't close to God at all. You know? So I looked, I just, like I said earlier, I have always struggled with trying to be accepted by someone. And I just looked for friends. You know? And then, and now I realize that even your friends, even those that love you, even your parents will fall short. During that time, and I, I started going to a different church, that's when I first attempted my first suicide. Um, you know, I had a knife to myself and I, I was like, you know, the voices in my head at that time were so small, but they told me, what else do you got to live for? You know, you wanted to be a preacher, you wanted to be a minister, but you can't do that anymore. That's what they told me. So what is there left for you? And the hate that I had for myself, I wasn't able to forgive myself. And so I, 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 that's why I took a knife to myself and I did it. I, um, I, I tried to act on it, but I couldn't. Thank God I wasn't able to. But it was during that time period in which I, I was I did that. Um, you know, another occasion I was driving and I felt this darkness come and come over me. And I started thinking about everything that I've done, everything that people have done to me. I felt alone and I was, I was driving and, you know, again, the voices say, just finish it, you know, no more suffering. All you gotta do is just crash your car and it's fine. You will never have to suffer in this world again. And people might even think, oh, I should have been nicer to him, right? So I thought that it would have been a win. But again, God stopped me from doing that. Um, and the thing is, growing up as with this hatred, I always thought myself as as the reason why things go bad. The reason why my parents fought was because of me. The reason why there was so much tension in the house was because of me. I mean, who else is there to blame but the person that gets mad about every little thing, right? I said earlier, I just wanted a friend. I just wanted to belong to someone. But when you put your trust in things other than God, failure is nothing but inevitable. So, you know, I was let down by my friend and I got hurt by some of them really badly. Really badly. Um, And at that time, I felt so much hatred again because I, I had invested so much in these new friendships. And then to have those friends hurt me. Man, I just couldn't deal with it, right? I just couldn't go on another day being like, man, why? And it's so dumb because the people that I loved, I ended up hurting too. Because I just didn't want anything. I just didn't want any close contact with anyone because of my past experiences. So I, I just, I started to hurt the people that I that, that actually tried to help me. And that, that was a tough thing because after that, you I just, you know, I just pushed myself away. So being pushed away, having um, financial struggles, Another thing, I've been going to school for such a long time since I graduated and I have not been able to finish. And I just feel like a failure because I've seen people my age graduate already, have a good job. And I just think to myself, how, you're such a failure. You're such a loser. You can't even do this. Look at those who graduated with you. They already have jobs and, and, and their degrees. What do you have? I know people thought of me as a failure. 
I thought of myself as a failure. So, you know, I wasn't going anywhere in school. I had such a bad work environment. I had so much financial problems and I had this emotional pain just carried inside of me. And this is really when the, the, the suicide, suicidal thoughts started to come. You know, they got to the point where every single day I thought about it. What can I do to finish this? And, and, and it even got to the point in which I knew what happens to you. You know, if you take your life, you don't go to heaven for that. But I was okay with that, so I thought, right? So, I was fine going to hell if it meant just dying here. Because I thought, there's nothing else for me. You know, I, I tried to kill myself again with the car. Um, alone in the freeway, going 100 plus miles. You know, crying for I don't know what. The voices started to get louder and say, just do it, right? And it gets so loud to the point where that's, you literally hear a voice next to you telling you to do it. You literally hear someone screaming at you to do it. Um, and I did it. So when the next time came around in which I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this now. The voice started saying, stop asking for attention, right? All you're doing is asking for attention. You're not serious about this. If you're serious, you'll do this right now. And I remember that day because that was the closest day I actually tried to kill myself. I got really, really close to killing myself. I was really close to crashing that day, just letting it, finishing it all. You know, because I would be so upset at myself, the fact that I'm saying, oh, I'm going to kill myself and I wouldn't do it. And I would get so upset. I'd be like, stop asking for attention. If you're going to do it, then actually do it. Do something for once. I just felt like a disappointment to everyone. You know, and I was dealing with this emotional scar, being betrayed by friends. And I got to the point in which I actually decided, you know what, this is how I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill this, these people. And after you kill them, you take your life. It's perfect. Right? It was perfect. You see, No matter what I did, I just never thought that I would be able to move on from my mistakes. But I realized that God doesn't call perfect people. I realized that God doesn't call those who have their life together. God doesn't call those who have their life already in motion, already you know, doing what they want to do. God calls those who are broken. God calls those who are hurt. God calls those who want to seek help. I know he is the reason I never killed myself. I know he's the reason why I stopped. But I realized something now, you know, that anyone is ready to forgive, is, 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 can be forgiven, including yourself. Because just like the Bible says about the, uh, talks about this king who forgives his servant, you know, so much amount of money. Yet this servant can't forgive someone else who owes him not even a fraction of what he owed the king. I ask myself, if God is willing to forgive me for my actions, for my sin, I need to learn to forgive others. And it's a tough thing, especially if you've been hurt by someone that you love so much to forgive them. But you know what? God forgives. He forgave me.
and he forgives you as well. It wasn't to the point I got so, so low to the point in which I was completely broken in every aspect in which I finally gave God a chance and thank God that he gave me grace. He gave me his mercy. He gave me his love. The things that I have now have not been because of my own strengths, but because of God. Because you want to know, you want to know a little secret is that God, the moment you decide to leave church, the moment you decide to shut him out, God is looking for you. God is waiting for the day you come back to him. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how gross you think you are or how disgusting you are, or how embarrassed you are. God still wants you back. You know, I tell myself, I don't, I'm not, you know, I don't have these men, as many talents as people, but God still chose me and God is calling you, right? God is calling you. And I'm not just making that up. I'm not just saying that. I know that because God told me to tell you that he's looking for you. He's telling you, don't feel like you're so alone. I've always been here with you. I know I've seen you struggle. God has seen you struggle. God has seen you in your moments of when you feel so alone, in the moments in which you yourself thought that you just didn't want to move on anymore, that you wanted to take your life. God sees you and he hurts every single time you think that. Because God is telling you that he wants you back. The way you are, he's going to transform you. He's going to change your life. And I, the only thing that I just have to say to you don't give up on God because he has never given up on you. God has a purpose for you. You might have thought that you only had one purpose, but God is telling you right now that there's more than that. There's more than what I thought I had for myself. God gave me a new opportunity. God gave me a new purpose. God gave me the privilege to be, you know, to be a part of to have my dad open a church, to be a part of this church, to be a youth leader. And I always thought to myself, how can I be a youth leader? Because God, not because of me, because of God. So if God is willing to change me, to work with me, God could do the same to you. It doesn't matter if you badmouth God. It doesn't matter if you badmouth, you know, being Christian or whatnot. God is a God is a God of forgiveness. So if you're struggling with depression or suicidal thoughts, let me tell you one thing. You're not going to find the answer anywhere else. You know, it's a good thing. And I do recommend you go get help. Visit someone. Talk to someone. Because you don't got to deal with this yourself. Even if you're a guy, being a man doesn't mean you don't have to hide your emotions. You know, that's a bunch of lies. Get the help that you need. But first of all, before anything, you got to get back to God. And God will give you the right resources to get the help that you need. Okay? Like I said, it's not gonna, it's it's not going to it's not going to happen overnight. But God is never going to leave you alone. So for those of you struggling, you know, if you don't know me, um you know, my name is Hector Misael Barajas. I am more than welcome. I, I, I'm more than welcome you guys. If you ever have any questions, I have just want to talk, want to vent out to someone. I'm, I'm here for you because I know what you've been through. I know what you feel, you know? So I'm going to be here for you. And for those of you who know someone maybe struggling with depression or, have, you know, struggling with suicide, um, don't give up on them because God could save them, amen? So um, I just wanna leave you guys with, um, God is a God of forgiveness. He forgives you. All you gotta do is forgive yourself and forgive others. And I promise you that God will give you a new opportunity. So again, thank you guys. Um, I know it was a little everywhere, but I just, I, it's a tough thing for me to write it down. But, um, you know, I thank God for this opportunity again. Um, so yeah, I 
Hope you guys, if you ever need any help, you know that I'm always going to be here for you. Doesn't matter. We've never talked. I just want to help. I mean, God bless you guys. Thank you for listening.